guys. Welcome to the penultimate week of Clock Cuts Get Your Act Together with me, Jack Wynn. Uh, we'll be going through some good stuff today. Um, looking forward to getting into this lesson and uh, ultimately uh, getting started back on term three when we come back uh, together, which I believe will in September. So we'll just, before we get started, we'll just throw in a quick disclaimer. If you're under 18, please tell your parents you're doing this session. Please stay safe online by just using your first name. Uh, please feel free to make comments and ask questions. And I hope you enjoy today's lesson. Yeah, so as I was saying just before, guys, it's the penultimate week. So we've got today's lesson and then next week, and that will be us for term two. So uh, we've been touching upon um, most of uh, the criteria for Rock School Grade 1. And so today, as I was saying last week, I thought we could get started on Rock School Grade 2. So today we're going to be looking at a few different new scales um, that you would be expected to learn and to know for, for Rock School Grade 2. We'll also... Uh, we're going to be going into a song. I won't uh, reveal the song just yet, but it should be a song that you're all very familiar with. And it's a chord-based song. And I guarantee if you can play this one at um, some kind of, you know, to your friends or, you know, a little, if you're if you're around at your family's house and, you, and you've got your guitar and you, and you bring this one out, I guarantee people will be singing along to it and they'll, They'll, uh, they'll want to they'll want to sing it and they'll know it so it's a good one to know so I thought we'd just um get warmed up just before we get started um I've got a new little tuning activity exercise today so I thought we'd start with that so the reason I've got my electric is because it's quite a bright guitar and you can hear um, you can get a lot of good uh good sounds out of it when it comes down to we'll be looking at harmonics today. So, for example, I'll give you an example of a harmonic just here. So, I've got the note there, E. But if I was to just very, very gently press my finger on said note, I get what's called a harmonic. Okay, so you can do this. You can do them all over. And this is a really great exercise for if you tune in your guitar as well. Because some people have a have a tendency or a better there is a better suited for matching tunings to higher pitches because you know you've got when we're tuning our guitar you've got you can tune like this like that um so that is a good way and that's tuning at this register but if what when we're tuning using harmonics it's lifting it up to that harmonic octave range where we can tune differently. So what you want to do when you're doing this, I'll give you an example. I'm going to detune this A string, okay, like so. So I'm going to just get my first finger and I'm going to press it very gently. And when you're picking with your um, right hand or if you're left hand with your left hand, you're going to want to get as close to the bridge to this sort of part of your guitar, and you're going to want to just gently press. You're not. You're not. If you. If you. If you're touching it, you're going to get the note. But if you just lift off and you just get, you'll get that sound. And that's the sound you're looking for. And then so when I'm doing that on my first finger, so if that's on the fifth fret, I'm going to be moving to tune to, to match it to the next string. I'm going to be matching it to the seventh fret. So I'm going to play that harmonic on the fifth fret and then get that harmonic there on the seventh fret, and I know that's flat. And then I know, I know I need to tune that one up like so. And once it starts to get in sync with, um, with the pitching, and the, uh, you'll hear it'll start to do a warble. And there we go, that should be in tune. And then you follow the same procedure for going down these strings, so I'm gonna match that and then I'm gonna match this. But once we get to this B string, because the strings, when you're going up, it goes up in what's called perfect fourths, whereas this, the interval from the G to the B is a third, because it's just two, uh, one, two, three semitones in between it, so it's a, called a third. So we can't match that by going like that. 
if you notice it's way off. So what we need to do with this, you need to, you can either take your B, so you can go up to your seventh fret and get that B octave, and then you can go to your 12th fret here, because you know that open is B, and you know if you go up 12, is it one full octave, and that's also B. So I can match that up like that, like so, and get that octave. And then the last one, you can, when you're wanting to do your um, B to E to match that, you can get one there, but it's um, it's quite hard. So you can also, what you can do is you can go to your fifth fret there, and you can go, you can go to, again to your 12th fret there. Like so, okay. And that's, yeah, I just wanted to give it a little, little uh, fun, little quick exercise of just how to tune your guitar using harmonics. It's um, another way you can do it. I know everyone's got tuners and things these days, but it pays to be able to know these things. So yeah, I thought we'll just get started up with um, a quick warm up exercise. So we won't want to spend too long because um, we've got quite a lot to get through. So we're just going to start off with a nice uh, chromatic ascending warm up exercise. So I'm going to go from... Uh, my fifth fret again on the A string, on the low A string, sorry, so on the note A. And we're just going to go up chromatically, going up all down strokes, and then we're going to go up the neck like so. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and skip into the A string. One, two, three, four, and now to the D. One, two, three, four, and to the G. One, two, three, and to the B, one, two, three, four, and to the E, one, two, three, four. And once we've got this, keep on that note, we want to move it up a semitone, and we're going to go down this time. We're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and last one, two, three, four. Four, and we're going to end just there. It's always good practice when you're doing these um, warm up exercises, like these uh, chromatic ascending or descending exercises. So when you finish up, whatever you know, you finish up on your low. Finish it with a bar chord if you can. Try and get your hands into a bar chord position like so, okay? Okay, so yeah. I thought we'll get into the first part of today's lesson. We're looking at rock school grade two now, guys. So... It's gone a little bit more up in complexity, but it's something I feel like we'll be able to to, to manage and it's within, well within our skill range. So again, I've tabbed out all these new scales we're gonna be looking at today, because I thought it's still really important for us to get to grasp with learning how to play tab, um, how to read tab, sorry, should I say. Um, so yeah, the first scale we're gonna be looking at is a scale called G major. So I'm gonna get my guitar, and I'm just going to do a little quick demonstration and then we'll get down to it and then we'll look at the tabs. So we're going to start with our index finger here, our ring finger, sorry. And we're going to have it on the third note of the E string. Okay, so it's going to be there on the third fret on the note G. So we're going to go G and then we're going to go open and then we're going to go two, three and then we're going to go on the D, open, two, four and then open on the G and then back down. Like so, okay. So if I just show you this on here, as I was just doing now, tab. Got my book that I've tabbed out here. So yeah. So I'll just leave that there for now. So we're gonna start on the three, and you see, so that is that would be on the third fret of the low G, and then you're gonna go up to the A string, and you're just gonna play it open. So that'd be on zero, and then two, then three, then zero on the D string, then two, then four then zero on the G string. And then when you're going back down when, uh, your scale, you don't repeat that top note, you don't repeat that G. You just go straight back down to play this one. Four, two, zero, three, two, zero, three. So it's one more time, we'll go through that together. And then we'll try to do it with a metronome. So we're gonna go, starting on the third fret, remember guys? So it's gonna go third and then open two, Three, open, two, four, open on G, four, two, open, three, two, open, G. 
And a really good practice when you're doing these scales is once you finish on your last note, so your first note is always your last note because you're going to go up the scale, then you're going to go down the scale. It's always good practice just to get your hand back into a G chord. Like so. Just a nice little shimming pattern, whatever you feel is nice. And then get yourself ready to practice the scale. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And get that nice strumming pattern going. And then. So it's really good what you're doing that because it get put starts to fit in your brain how you could use that in musical phrases and things like that. But we'll move on now, guys. We'll go to our next scale, which is E natural minor. So we're going to go through the three scales today, so nothing too too much. Um, so E natural minor. This is a very similar position. So we're down here on the neck for for this scale as well. So we're going to go E natural minor. So obviously it's going to start on E. So open. And then we're going to go two, three on the G. And then we're going to go open on the A. And then two, three. And then open on the D. And then two. Okay. And then it's going to go back down. Like so. So just to put that in context, I'll just show it again on my tabs just so we can sort of see where we're at with it. So, yeah. So it's going to start open on the E. And then two, second fret, third fret on the E, and then go to the open on the low A, and then second fret on the A, third fret on the A, and then it's going to go open on the D, second fret on the um, D, and then back and then up, back down, open on the D, uh, third fret on the A, second fret on the A, open on the A, and then down here we should have um, third fret on the E, second fret on the E, and finally open on the E to finish off that E natural minor chord in which it's on scale. So again, with this one, it's good practice to start to start with an E minor chord and just get some two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So really get into that rhythm. So again, we'll do it up one, zero on the, um, open on the E, second on the E, third on the E, second, open on the A, uh, second on the A, uh, third on the A, and then open on the, um, open on the D, and then back down, and get into a card again. And if you want to switch that up and go to your G, and you want to do your G major scale now, it's really good to practice to do. And then get into it like that. And obviously I'm going up a tempo which suits me for practice, but when you guys are doing this, go at, um, a tempo which is very much suited to, to you, you know. I recommend starting off real slow and then as soon as you start to build up more confidence with going up and down the neck with these scales, then you can start to put in a bit of a bit of speed and a little bit of flair, and you can start to do things like you know hammer-ons and things like that, and you know really have some fun with doing these scales because when you're practicing these scales, you shouldn't be a boring thing. Try and make it into a game for yourself, and you know whatever you can do to make it entertaining and make it less mundane and less academic is the right way to go about it, okay? So yeah, last but not least, guys, we're gonna get into this last scale, C minor pentatonic, and then that's us for scales today, and we're gonna get into uh, a good, a great song. So this is gonna start on the third fret of our A string on the note C, okay? And then we're gonna use our pinky for this one, okay? And we're gonna be using this finger to go up. So you're gonna start on the third fret, you're gonna play your pinky on the six like that, and then we're gonna go down, play it on the third fret of the D, fifth fret of the D, and then fifth fret of the G, and then fifth fret of the um, G, uh, sorry, third fret of the G, and then fifth fret of the G. So all in all, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three. 
Okay, so it's going to end there. And then if we look at it on, again on the tablature book, we've got so three on the A, six on the A, three on the D, um, five on the D, and then going up to the G, three on the G, five on the G, and then back down, three on the um, G, and then five on the D, going back down the scale, three on the D, uh, six with your pinky on the A, and then finally three on the A to finish up on that C. Okay, so we're going to go through that one more time, guys. I'm not going to bother with metronomes today because we're just getting into these scales. So we're going to go one, six, so three, six, three, six, three, six, three, six, five, so three, five, six, five. Okay, so I'll just do it one more time. So we're going to go three, six, three, five, three, five. so okay yeah so that's it for the scales today guys with, with uh, rock school grade two so those are all scales you would find in the exam piece for uh, rock school grade two um yeah so without further ado let's move on to the next song so the song I, the song i thought we should look at today is a song called don't look back in anger uh, by the band oasis and if you're not familiar with this song I'm going to do what I do every week and we'll just have a little listen. So with this song, the reason I've chosen this song is because it's using all open chords apart from one, an F, and we're going to go to an F minor. Um, and also, it's going, the chord changes are going every two beats. So if you listen, it's going one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two okay? So it's a really good song because it's like, pushing ourselves with our chord movements but it's not with our uh, it's not out of our out of our sort of limits of what we can do so a little tune on my guitar just out of tune with the song apologies guys just making sure i'm in tune with the record Right, yeah, so, yeah, without further ado, we're going to get straight into this song. Um, and it's going to start on the chord C. So for this intro, it's going to start on the chord C. And then go to the chord F. So you can either play this F as a bar chord F. Remember, we've been doing the bar chords in that E position. So if you get your E chord and play it and keep this finger free, slide it up one and then bar that you've got your nice bar chord f or the way i like to do an f in this one which is how it's played in the record is you've got your c chord there your normal position c chord and if i want to make that an f i'm just going to take these two fingers here and i'm going to bring them down there okay and i'm going to put swap this one the pinky for this one and then that is going to just slot on top like that like that. So then just looking at that move closely. So that's the F and then switching it to the C. Okay? F, C. So that, so you can keep this finger the same, keep that finger the same, and just move this one down there, and then tuck this one there on the third fret of your D string, like that. And so we're on the C. And now we're moving to F. And C. Now we're moving to F. So just that move one more time. It's a nice, easy little move. So we're on our C chord. So you've got your first finger on the uh, first fret of the B string. And then you've got your second finger on the second fret of the D. And then put in your ring finger 
on the third fret of the air like so. So then, yeah, so we're going to keep this finger on, this finger on, okay? And the only thing is it's going to move your middle finger and your pinky is going to come into play as well. So you're going to put that on, tuck it underneath there, and then you just, this one is just going to slide just underneath your ring finger on the third fret of the D string, right? And see? So if you practice that movement, So this is the intro. Okay, and now we're gonna get into the chords for the verse, okay? So it's gonna start with a C again. So we're gonna go from the intro. It's gonna go C. Um, and then we're gonna do that, this little movement here. Gonna do a little movement where we just go. Give me a sec. Make sure I'm that. Yes, yeah, so it's gonna do a little movement here, and then we're gonna go. So we're gonna one, two, and then we're gonna go to a G. One, two, and it's gonna go E minor. One, two. And then we're going to do E7. So remember, E7 is very simple. You just play your normal E chord and you just take the ring finger off. Okay, so it's so E, E7. So it's going to go slip inside to B. So it's, so it's going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then last but not least to finish up, it's going to go to an F. So we can do that thumb over trick, remember? So you can go like that. So remember, it's like you see, but you're just tucking that one there and playing that one like that. So it's gonna go an F, a G to C. And this is the only chord in it that moves too fast. It goes three, four. So all in all, we'll just go through that verse. And uh, because then once we've got this verse and we've got the chorus down, that sort of makes up the pretty much the whole of the song. So we're gonna go, slip inside the eye. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? So that all in all is the progression for the verse. And then we're going to get to the pre-chorus. This is where things are going to get a little bit trickier, but not too much. So we're just going to play a nice and simple F. So we're going to put our fingers there. So like the C there, the thumb over. So we're going to go. And then we're going to make it minor halfway through. So it's going to go one, two, three, four. And then back to a C. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three. Okay, so it's doing that three times, making that transition from that F to making that F minor, which is, if for those of you who are still struggling with that, all we're going to do is, so we've got our F there, and we're just going to take this finger off, so remember it's in the E position to make any chord minor, like you do with E major, you take your first finger off, or if you're in an A there, if you take your middle finger off, if it's a bar chord, and that's how you make any chord major minor, but with this one, it's exactly the same, so I've got my F there, and I'm just taking it off there. But I'm playing it in the thumb over technique, like though, like this. So I'm going to take this off. So if you just want to practice going between those two, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just practice taking it off and on two, three, four. Like so. Yeah, so we'll start that again. So hopefully you have that F to F minor transition sort of in your head and uh, you'll have it down. So we're going to go. So I start a revolution from my seat. Bed. Okay, 
Cause you said the brains I might have turned to my head Step outside to minor in blue And this way it changes So we've done that three times This way it's going to go to a G So if we've gone from C It's going to go to Stand up beside the fireplace Take that love from up So it's going to go E, e that E7 again Like so So it's going to stand up beside the fireplace Take that look from up your face Cause you ain't ever So A minor You ain't ever gonna burn my heart out So we're gonna go A minor So, so one, two, three So remember that change every two beats Which is most of this song is Changes are every two beats for every chord So it's um really good and easy thing to get into your heads You know when you're moving with the chords So you got um where were we so yeah all right take that look from my e7 love your face so a minor to the g to f and this is the chorus now guys and this is the last bit we'll have to learn so we're going to go over all these bits and bobs again um if i'm moving too fast for anyone uh Please tell me slow down, or if you want to go over a chord again, or the or the changes, go over them again. Uh, you can find like the chords for this one on ultimateguitar.com. Uh, I said that great website where you can type any song you want and just type in chords after it. You will find um, a version of that song on there, and it'll have the chords above. But this just helps you guys with knowing where to change and things like that. And it's good practice. So, yeah, the chorus is exactly the same as the verse. Okay, so we've got the C to the G to an A minor to an E7 to an F and a G back to a C. And remember the change three. Uh, that's at the end of the phrase of the chord progression so all in all I'll sing it with you so you know where we are in the song but we'll kind of go through the changes so it's going so Sally can wait she knows it's too late as we're walking on by so three four and that's the chords for the chorus so We'll go. We'll just get straight back into the verse, which is exactly the same as the chorus. So remember, so we've got. So if we're on verse two here, we're going C to the G to the A minor to the E to the F to the G to the C. So with this one as well, it's really important to visualize the chord shapes you're going to be moving to once. When you're playing this chord song, if I know I'm on that first chord C, slip inside, I'm already visualizing that I'm going to be leading with this first finger. Okay, I'm going to be leading like that to get me into the shape. Okay, some people you might want to do this to the C like, and you might think it, you might find it easy to play your G in the third position like this. So you can just take these two fingers here. Put them up there like skip a string and then you've got your pinky there to be playing on that top third fret of your G like so, so you might find that easier or you might find this easier so it's all personal preference I personally find that's easy because it's less of a movement but some people are so familiar with playing like a G chord, for example, in that position with those three fingers. So that, so if you were to play it like that, would feel alien and strange. But it's really good practice to to play play your open chords with different fingers, so you can identify. So, for example, if I was to play um, an E with my first three fingers there, if I play it there. Got my finger very much free there, so these fingers are going to stay in position to when I'm going to if I'm going to switch to a bar chord. You know, it's really good. So regardless, if I'm like playing E like that, 
I've got to make a bigger change. So I'm taking these three fingers off to lead with that on to switch there. So it's just food for thought, these guys. It's how to make these chord transitions faster. And if you if you're still relatively new to playing chords and moving between chords, you'll find that once you get into these things of doing these little tricks of the trade, as I like to call them, um, and moving more efficient ways to chords with using fingers that are closer to the chord position that you want to move to, you'll find that you're making these transitions a lot more smooth and a lot more efficiently and with less effort put in, which is effectively what we would like from life. Yeah, so um, let's get back into this. So, so we've gone through a chorus and a verse, which the chords are the same, and that's a brilliant thing. So the only things we need to know is going to a pre-chorus. So remember, that is just a switch. The trickiest thing about this one is making a switch from F major there to minor. So I'm gonna start a revolution from my bed. Because you said the F to the F minor to my head. The last time in this one's F to the F minor to the C. And now we're going to go to the G to the E7. A minor G F. And G, last chord for the pre chorus. So what yeah, I'm doing as well, you might want to be good, is making this G, you're going to play G like this, make it a seventh. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that top note there and we're going to flatten it by two semitones and we're going to play it there. So it's going to go G, E, G7. Like so. So you can just practice going between that change because on the record, if you listen to it, it goes G, Seven and then to the car, so sad he can wait. To the knows it's too late as we're walking on by. My soul slides away. We don't look back in anger. I heard you say. Like so, guys, yeah. So take this song away, uh, have a go through it. When you're going as well with the strumming pattern of this, and it's a very, very um, sort of straightforward one. And it's just going, so in the chorus, you're going one, two. So I'm going down, down, up. So if you get that into your head and you're playing really sort of highlights those rhythmic changes. So on the last one there as well, you know when you're playing your A man to the G for the last uh, the last chords in the uh, in the chord phrase, um, you're just going to give them single strokes like and get that back to that rhythm. So it's alternate. Down, down, so if you get that rhythm in your head when you're doing this, you'll you'll find it easier. So you're going one, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Like so, guys. Yeah, so it's a good one to a good one to learn this song because the chords are moving relatively fast, but not too fast that so it's um, unattainable for us to be able to, to 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 get out. And this is very much a grade moving on to like a grade two sort of like grade two style piece um, where you would be expected to make these chord movements and to sort of like know these chords as well, all being like the open chords but bar the F. Okay, yeah, so I just wanted to get into the 
final sort of bit of today's lesson, which um, we do every week. Well, I just wanted to go through some tips and stuff that I think is really beneficial to know. So I'm gonna, just going to get my thing up again. Yeah, so I just wanted to start with saying, like, so we've, you've been going on this journey uh, as a beginner guitarist, you would call yourself, and you've been playing for so long, say you've been playing for two, three, four, five, six months, and you want to want, you want to sort of know when am I going to sort of like pass that benchmark of beginner to an intermediate guitarist. And so these are like a few little things, just just for yourself, just to know. And these these are really good ways of knowing the differentiation of whether I'm a beginner or an intermediate. And like, firstly, like the thing I would say is like open chords. So we've got all your open chords. Can you play all your open chords? Can you identify them? Can I? Can you play? Can you know that's a D? Can you know that's a C? Can you know that's a G? Can you know that's an E? A minor, D minor. Okay, so it's all your open chords there. Um, another thing as well, can you? So we've got all our low E string here. So when you're playing bar chords, for example, so if I'm in the E position there and I'm on the third fret, I know that's the note G, so I know that's a G bar chord in the E position. You know, G open, G E position. Okay, it's a bar chord. So can you? On just on this low E string, really, if you know all your notes from here to 12, so if you know that open is E, 12 E, that's one octave. This exact same goes for every string. So open, octave, open, octave, open, octave, open, octave. So when I play that open, when I play it there, the string is vibrating at twice the, the amount, which makes it an octave above that, or 12, or 12 uh, semitones. Um, so yeah, so if you can just identify all these notes up to this, so I know if I'm going E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, F, uh, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and then E, up to there. So if you got that down, you're going to know all your notes on this high string as well, because it's the exact same. Yeah, so if I'm playing the G there, it's a G there. If I'm playing A there, it's an A there. And if I'm playing high E there, it's an E there. You know, so if you know that, and you know that, you know, two sixes are a third of the of the strings of what of what the what the notes are on the fretboard. And then if you get to know this one as well, here, you know, you know, kind of like you know in a lot of the neck already. Then so so I recommend to learn these, learn these, and then you'll know that one. And then if you know that one, you know that one. If you go that up, that's an octave. Okay. So if I play my G there, and then you go up to, if, so that's the G on a third fret there. And if I play that, so I'm skipping the D, skipping the A string, and just playing on the on the uh, fifth fret of the D. Uh, so that is an octave. So wherever I am, if I know the notes on this string, then I can go, I know that that's a B, because I know that's a B, and that's an octave. Okay, so then you know that as well. So you know, then you know your E, your A, your D, and you know your high E. Okay, so that's most of the guitar, and it's a really beneficial too to have. Uh, right, and we're moving on. Uh, can you play power chords? So you do power chords, you know, your roots, your fifth. So power chords, really good things to use, really good things to uh, utilize again really comes in handy knowing all the names of this low A string and this A because that's where you're going to play your power chords from. So if I want to play an A power chord, I'm going to know it's there. If I want to play, uh, D, I don't know, E flat power chord or D sharp, I know it's there. Okay, but if I want to play it on the A string, I know it's there. E flat's there. E flat there, E flat there. Okay, so really good things to learn, guys. And if you're not familiar with notes and stuff, just go on a look at a piano, type in the names, note names of a piano, and you'll see it, it just goes up chromatically. And just familiarize yourself with note names uh, because it will serve you well in later life. 
uh, last but not least, I just want to talk about practice times. I obviously I've not got, had a chance to practice with. Uh, I'll see you guys uh, in a in a short while, so I don't know what your sort of practice routines and things are like. Do you? I recommend it's more beneficial, and I've had this conversation with a lot of my students. It's more beneficial to pick a guitar up every day and spend five minutes on it. And that five minutes, you can just be noodling. You can be playing over a song that you've that you've been sort of like playing. You could be doing the exact same thing you do every day, five minutes. But it's more beneficial to do that than it is to pick up your guitar once a week and play for an hour. And this is what I say to everyone: five minutes a day, you're getting that. It's it's by doing something, the, by repetition, that's where you learn. Okay, and it's not necessarily about the duration of time you spend doing something. It's about it's about the rep repetitiveness of it, about doing the same thing every day, five minutes, much better than practicing for one hour a week. Okay, if you can practice one hour a day, brilliant, but not everyone has that time in their lives um, to do to dedicate to that. And, you know, that's um, that's where we're at. And if you do, that's brilliant. But, you know, OK. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, the last thing I wanted to talk about is just about learning something every week. It's really important to learn something every week. So like so to, if you tuned into today's lesson, we've learned something, we've learned three new scales, G major. E natural minor and C minor pentatonic. Go away with those. Practice those. Um, if you just if you just type in, if you're not familiar, with, if you've got something, like which one did it go to? If you just type in those scales, and um, it'll come up with tab. Now, hopefully by now, you should sort of have a basic understanding of how to read tab and how it works. Okay, so by doing that, by learning something like that, it's it's what it's doing. It's having a, a good effect on your mind and and keeping. Keeping it, keeping it positive and keeping your interest up with an instrument because if, you, if you're just playing the same thing week over and week over or every day or whatever, you're playing the same thing, you don't bother to learn anything new. You know, as, 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 as people, as human beings, you know, we strive to learn. You know, even if you don't think you do, you want to learn, you want to discover. And so you'll, sh you'll slowly get bored with what you're doing and, and, you, and, it'll, and it'll hinder you and it'll stop you wanting to pick up your 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 instrument yeah so that's all i wanted to talk about this week guys um i hope you've enjoyed this week's lesson and i'll see you next week for for, for the last week of term two it's blown by yeah so if you've got any questions or anything you want to ask me right now um and i'm all ears uh please give us a like and a and a, and a comment it, it massively i massively appreciate that and it's really good for the channel as well because i know whether we're doing a good job or a bad job or whether, you know, I don't know. Yeah, so thank you very much, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson as much as I have. I'll see you all. See you all next Wednesday at 4 p.m. Yeah, I'll keep, yeah, I'll keep checking comments and things like that. So if you've got any song suggestions, as always, put a little comment in this week's video or any week's video for that matter. Probably this week, so I don't have to stumble across a comment from week two that says, "Can we learn Paranoid by you know Black Sabbath?" Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily going to be checking week two, so if you keep it to this week's, that'd be great. I'll check this week's, and if you do want to learn Paranoid by Black Sabbath, you can do that. Okay, so bye for now, guys. Have a great rest of your week. <laughs>